Hey, what is up, guys? This is Cash Freak Tim from CashFreak.com, and today we're talking about GSAC. This is going to be part six of our multi part tutorial talking about GSAC. If you watched our last video, you'll know we covered customization and personalization of GSAC. Now, I host all my videos on YouTube, and unfortunately, they have a 15 minute time limit per video. So, there was a couple more things I wanted to show you that I didn't get to in the last video. I want to cover those before we move into some of the more advanced topics. So, let's get started. Now the first thing I want to talk about is filtering. Now if you remember a couple videos back we talked about filtering, which is how to take your big list of geocaches you have here and cut it down by a specific set of criteria. Now one of the things I neglected to mention was that if you want to run the same filter over and over again, you don't have to go and fill out that form I showed you in the last couple videos ago every single time. You can save your filter so with only a couple clicks you can run that filter whenever you need to. Let me show you a little bit about how this works. We're going to create a couple sample filters by going over here to search, filter, and what I want to do, I want to create a quick little filter that's going to show me all the regular and large size geocaches that are around my house. So I'm just going to have it show me traditional and multis that are regular and large. Now if you remember in the last video we talked about if you wanted to run the filter all you're going to do is go over here and click go. But instead of clicking go we want to save it so we're going to click the save button. It's going to ask you to give it a name. I'm going to call this leg regular large round home. I'm going to hit OK. And then we're going to hit go. So it'll run the filter but what you'll see this time is now under the select a save filter drop down, you'll now see that the filter we created called regular large around home is now in the list. You'll also see in this list a couple pre-populated filters that were created by GSAC as well. It'll show you the defaults as well as any of the saved filters you created yourself. I'm going to create another one real quick. We're going to go to search, we're going to cancel the filter we're currently using, and then we're going to go to create a new one. In this one, I think we will have it show me micros within five miles of my house. So again, we're going to have it just show traditional multis, and we're just going to have it show me micros. Again, we're going to click Save first. We're going to call this Micros Around Home. We're going to hit OK, and then Go. It's going to run the filter, and you'll notice that Micros Around Home is now in the Select a Save Filter drop down. Now, one of the nice things as you create these filters and you want to run them more than once, all you have to do is just go in here and select the filter you want, and it'll automatically run it. This just makes it much more simpler if you want to run the same filter more than once. You know, you might go in here and you might run this filter every week. You don't want to go in there and fill out that form every single time you want to run the filter. It makes it much more simpler to just go in here and save and then run the filter when you need it. Now the next concept I want to cover real quick is databases. So far, whenever we've been in GSAC, we've only been using the default database. And a database is basically the collection of geocaches you're working with. Think of it as like a big bucket that all the geocaches you are working with are in. But you can have multiple buckets, and there's many reasons to do this. You know, maybe you might travel, and you want to have one database for Ohio, and you want to have one for Pennsylvania, and you want to have one for Tennessee. You may have multiple people that use the same computer. So maybe you guys don't always cache at the same time. You know, maybe one person has a different set of found caches than another person. And you don't want to be using the same database. You want to divide it up. So you can create a database for one person and a completely separate database for another person. And let me give you an example of how that's going to work. So you'll notice the default database is called default. What if we want to create a second database? To do that, we're going to go up here to the database menu. We're going to go to New. And maybe two people use the same computer. Maybe I have a friend that uses the same computer, or I have a family member that uses the computer, and they want their own database for their own caches. We're going to give it a name. We'll call this one Bob's Database. You can pretty much leave all the default settings as they are. And we're going to click Create. Now Bob has his own database, 
that he can use. So you'll notice under the database drop-down menu, we now have Bob's database and default. Now to make it easy, we'll get rid of that name default and we'll call it Tim's database. I'm going to click rename. Hit OK. And now we have the two databases. We have Bob's database and Tim's database. So as you can see, Tim, myself, I can have my set of caches and then Bob can come in here and he could run a pocket query. He's going to load it into his database, Bob's database. Click OK. It's going to import. I'm going to click OK. Now you'll see Bob has a complete separate set of geocaches than I do. This is one of the many uses of databases. I find it to be most helpful if multiple people are using the same computer or if you want to segment your geocaches into different states, but you can use it however you would like. One other thing I want to talk to you about how to customize is what is known as the speed bar, or it's also referred to as the shortcut bar. That's this bar you see up here at top with all these little buttons. These are basically shortcuts. Uh, it's you know just a one-click way to do something that you would normally have to look through the menus to find or use a function key to do. So if you want to customize this bar, all you have to do is right click in any empty area and you're going to go to Customize Tool Buttons. And just like the column headings, these buttons are customizable. You can move them around. I can move them wherever I want them. You can also add and remove. You know, let's say maybe I don't want this help icon here. I can just drag it off and it goes away. And it lets you, there's a, a big list here of buttons and you can add and remove them as you need them. And again, this is completely customizable. You can do this however you want it. You know, for example, a lot of times I want a send to GPS button up here. Just a one click way to send the geocaches to my GPS. I also like to have a map quest button up here so at any point I can just go ahead and click it and it's going to open up my geocache in MapQuest. And like I said, the best way to do this, go in here and look around. Start playing around with all the different options. You know, just drag things up there, take them down. Very easy to do. Once you're ready to go, you're just going to hit OK. And now I've got these buttons up here. So if I want to use my MapQuest button now, just select the geocache I want to look at the map for, click map, and there it goes. It's going to open up my map. Speedbar is very customizable. It's a great shortcut feature in GSAC, and I think once you start playing around with it and adding and removing the shortcuts you want, I think you're going to like it a lot. Another area that's very customizable in GSAC is the search bar. And that's this bar right in this area. It's called the search bar. And just like the shortcut bar, you can customize it as well. So to do that, again, you're just going to right click. You are going to go to customize search bar. And it works just the exact same way as the shortcut bar. As you can see, you can just take things, you can drag and drop them to different locations, you can move the items around. You can add and remove them by just unchecking the box here. So for example, let's say I don't need name search anymore. I'm going to uncheck it, I'm going to click OK, and as you can see it's gone. Again, a great little trick, something else you can customize in GSAC very easily. That should do it for today. I hope you guys found some of these tips and tricks a little bit informative. I hope you learned a little bit about how GSAC works. By this point, you should have a pretty good grasp on GSAC and should be able to do a lot of the basic functions in it. In the future, we're going to be talking about some of the more advanced features of GSAC. We're going to start talking about macros, which are one of the most powerful features of GSAC. And I think once you guys learn them, you're going to like it a lot. So until then, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Head on over to my website, cashfreak.com. And until next time, I will see you guys later.